I'm forwarding the live if anybody's on here yet. Backwards now. That's what we're doing. We're going backwards because we can. I'm just forwarding the live to everybody that I can think of to forward it to, and I hope that uh, hope this finds y'all uh, well and prosperous. Hallelujah! Praise God! I put mine in a little stand here. Point. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what I did there. There we go. There we go. We're cooking with grease now, guys. Good to have y'all. Praise the Lord. Hey, Sarah Lou. Good evening to see you in there. There's or what? Let's see who we got here. Sarah Lou. Um, yeah, that's cool. Oh, man, everybody doing okay tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you all to Coffee with Clell. This is Coffee. I'm Clell. Fresh, hot, just squeezed coffee. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Good stuff. Anyhow, uh, this is Coffee with Clell. I try to do uh, minister the Word of God. We're going to pray a little bit. We're going to get together. We're going to talk about the Unity Fast, Prayer Call Ministry. We're going to talk about what's going on in the world um, in relation to the Word of God. Um, every time I talk about what's going on in the world, I get in trouble, so I have to quit. Um, anyhow, it's good to be here tonight. Praise the Lord, and I'm glad y'all are here. I hope that uh, everybody's uh, fast was successful. And, uh, and we, we got a little closer to God. Hopefully, we got a little closer to God as a group and as a as just just individual people. You know, just individual people. Um, there ain't nothing to it. Just a good day to be here. God is good. Let me go ahead and go through my little chorus thing I have to go through. Um, this is Coffee with Clell. This is Coffee. I'm Clell. Um, if you go to my, we are now, uh, link tree through, um, YouTube, Amazon or, uh, TikTok is not allowing me to download my live videos. So if you miss it, you just miss it. They're not, they're, they say that it's a technical error, but it's a technical error every day. Okay. So, you know, is everybody else having technical errors? I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe there really is a problem, or maybe it just happens to be on conservative people. I don't know, but I know it's every time a glitch comes up, it gets me. Good for you, girl. You touched your spirit. I know it did. We've been praying for you in your situation. So we have a link tree from YouTube, and um, and 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 we have a link on my bio which take, will take you to Amazon if while you're on that link you buy anything at Amazon. Um, a few pennies will come to Coffee with Clell. I am Coffee with Clell. Um, I own Coffee with Clell. It's my website. Um, I don't sell anything. So, you know, uh, I'm not here to, I'm not here trying to make money. We're here trying to spread God's word. Hello, old brother Tom. One of the things that that money will do, though, is help us to keep the prayer talk ministry free, no matter who, no matter where, no matter what. This is a prayer talk. It's all of this is a, a small, pardon me, it hiccups, a small little, <clears throat> little piece of cloth. And I put a little dot of oil on it. I formulated the oil myself um, from the from the um, thing of it, anyways. And uh, wonderful. And uh, so I formulated the, the, the oil itself, and we send these prayer cloths out to whoever, to wherever, okay? 
Um, we've sent them out to India, Pakistan, the Netherlands, Canada, all over the United States. So uh, if you want one, all you have to do is message me. Is message me. I'm sorry, I, got, I was getting a message. Is message me, and I will send you one. My wife will also send you one. She is D dash D S Q. You'll see her on here, I'm sure, in a little bit. She is trying to pass a kidney stone, and we may actually end up having to break this up, and I may have to take her to the doctor if that's the way it goes. We're praying for the Lord's mercy in this, and Lord willing, golly, the woman's tougher than me, I tell you that. Now, if you don't want to send me your press, your information, that's fine, I understand. Take a screenshot of my email and send send it to my email with your request and a mailing address. I have to have a mailing address, okay? If you have an apartment or if you have a, a lot, a suite, you have to put it on there because the mail don't give a rip anymore. I am totally not impressed with mail. We got one back the other day and, and uh, a friend of mine said they sent us something, a card, and it came back and she sent us and she said, is this your address? And I'm like, it's exactly my address. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the, the mail is not impressive anymore. Hallelujah. So we do that. And if you want a prayer cloth, simply send me your uh, mailing address in a message. Don't do it on the open if you don't mind. Uh, and we will send it to you. Make sure you put your name on there too. Like, you know, whatever your um, thing on here is, like if, you, if your name is Goose Down Fella, okay, I'll mail it to Goose Down Fella, but I'm not sure it'll get to you. You know, the post office is supposed to deliver to the box, but um, some carriers get overzealous and stuff. In any event, um, if you'll do that, we will mail you a prayer cloth. We will not be anything in there requesting money of any form or fashion. That's not what we're trying to do. If you are sending it to somebody, we had a lady that wanted us to send some to her, her friend that was a, in the Navy, and uh, we will enclose this note by request. The, the note my wife wrote, and it says, Enclosed, you'll find a prayer cloth. God's word tells us to anoint and pray for the sick. James 5 and 14. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over them, over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And in Acts 19, 11 and 12, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that when the handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick, their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Because of the times, it's not always possible to get to the elders or the elders to get to you. So we have anointed this piece of cloth with anointing oil and have prayed for you and your need, whatever it may be. We also write your name in a notebook and we pray over the notebook every morning and night. It is our hope that you place the anointed cloth somewhere in your Bible, wallet, the fridge, that when you see it, it is a reminder that God is with you and that you are loved and are being prayed for daily in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sarah Lou. I always look up just in time to see the old, the old hate mongers. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, that guy right there, Beeswick, he's looking for a fight too. Go ahead and take care of him, please, if you don't mind. He'll be back with it. He just wants to fight over a scripture. Um, so here we are, and we are doing the um, the prayer cloth ministry. This is the book we write your name in and your your address. And this this is as high tech as it gets. Oh, what you got? Okay. Okay. And so, if you want to, and if you don't, if you will. Let us pray over this. Let's pray over this, 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 this prayer cloth ministry that's reaching around the world. Let's pray over these things. You're fine, Angela. You're doing great. I'm praying for your headache too. And so let's pray over the prayer cloth ministry, and 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 we'll use this time to introduce and to pray for the the um, tonight's live and all the other things that we're going to pray for. 
But right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, as we come to you in faith, believe and trust in you, God, and lifting you up and magnifying you, the one true God and everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the King of Glory, the Mighty One, the Holy One, the Alpha, the Omega, oh God. We praise your holy name and we ask you, Lord, if you would, to minister to us and through us, to lead us and guide us in your way in truth and righteousness. Forgiving our sins, Lord, let us be forgiving of others. Blessing our homes, let us be a blessing to others. We ask you tonight, Lord, for each and every need represented here in this book, this prayer cloth book. God, every family that it's touched, every person, every, every desire, every need, every challenge, Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray that you would minister in Jesus' name. God, we have healing. We got family issues. We have everything so far, Lord. It's in, it's in here. You know, families being, being put back together. We praise you for this. We thank you. Tonight, I want to pray for Sarah Lou and her family. God, that you would minister to them. I want to pray for Angela's head. God, give her some relief from that headache. God, in Jesus' name, we want to pray. continue to pray for Renee. Lord, she's still sick and ill and still trying to recover. Dalton's in the Navy. We need Joe's got special needs. We've got so many people that have so many needs, God. We want to pray that you, Lord Jesus, would anoint the, each and every person's prayer tonight, that, Lord, it would be a, a perfect prayer, perfectly poised, perfectly positioned, perfectly said, according to your will and your purpose. God, heal us in our minds, our, our souls, our bodies. Heal us in our finances. Heal us in our community. Heal us in our nation. Help us to find the Second Chronicles 714 experience as we unify in the fast, which continues even tonight and tomorrow. God, we ask you to continue to bless us in this and to stretch this out, that, Lord, we would continue. We would have this in perpetuity that someone around the United States would be, or, or even around the world, would be praying and fasting in Jesus' name for the unity of the body of believers, for the unity of the church, for the unity of purpose that we, Lord Jesus, so desperately need right now. In Jesus' name, we pray, trust, and believe, giving you glory, honor, and praise. We want to pray for Anna and surgery, that, Lord, that you would touch. She's going to have surgery. That every hand that would touch her, Lord, would be anointed, would be directed, would be given. We want to pray for uh, Sister Kate's stomach, Lord. I don't know what's wrong with it. Give what you do, God. Right now, in Jesus' name, that you would, you would, Take care of that, Lord, in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the, the, our daughters flying again, Lord, and we want to keep your hand on her, Brooke. We want to ask you, God, to put your put your hand on her and keep her safe and give her smoother travel this time. Let her get some rest, oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would continue to bless, to guide, and to keep us, Lord, because we know, Lord, that without you, we're nothing. But with you, God, we are everything. And so we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Larry can't be with us, God. We want to pray for him. He's in a special situation tonight. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I just want to pray for my friend, God. Hallelujah. That you would move on him, that you would minister to him, that you would glorify your name through works and deeds. Oh, God, for each and every one of us here and those of us that can't be, we're asking in Jesus' name, God, special provision, special touch, special healing. In Jesus' name, we pray, we trust, and we believe. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hey, Lathos. Now, I'm going to tell y'all that we have got, um, the, the fast is continuing. We've got tomorrow covered. we got Tuesday covered. We need somebody to cover Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We've got four days for anybody that wants one of those days. Hallelujah. And and, and praise God and Welcome up. Renee, we, we just got through praying for you, sweetheart. We just got through praying for you. God knows the whole story, and you are truthful right there. God does know the whole story. Thank you, Kate, uh, Sarah, for that for that uh, trumpet. I appreciate that. But God is moving right now. So if you are listening, and if you can take, um, um, Renee's got Saturday, y'all. That means that Saturday at 6, she's going to put her spoon down. So everybody knows what that means. And that you are a church trying to spread the gospel. Do you? That's what we believe we are, Benny. That's exactly what we believe we are. We're, but see, we're we're not the church in and of itself because the church can't be contained. The church is the people, 
and 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 this is an apostolic movement. And by apostle apostolic, we mean we are taking church to some place it's never been before. And I've never seen this here, so I want to say that welcome here, Benny Jam, and and uh, let's 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 get the, together in the Word of the Lord here. So now we've got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Anybody want to take Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday? Um, it's it's just to here. Worship, love. That's exactly where we're at, brother. That's exactly where we're at. We're glad you're here with us too. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is doing great things, wonderful things. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not through praying yet, y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Lathus has got Wednesday. Thank you, Lathus. That means we've only got Thursday and Friday. Anybody that wants it, um, Thursday and Friday, either one of those two days or both of them, whatever. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not in shape to do a three-day fast yet. I had, I, like a lot of people, I had trouble today coming in. It was just it, my, I got the headache. I, like Angela was talking about she had a headache earlier. I got the headache. I got the queasies. Um, I was trying to do some work. And, um, and, and, and as I was trying to do the little bit of work that I was doing, um, I got overheated and I had to come in and drink me a Gatorade, which is a clear liquid. I drank sugar-free Gatorade because I didn't want it to have no, no nothing in it, but I had to have my electrolytes put in my body. And so, um, I was like, oh man, it hurt. But, uh, that's, that's the truth right there, Benny. We're going to, we're trying to forgive and, and be forgiven. So right now in Jesus name, I'm, I'm not through praying. I can feel it. We're, we're fixing to bust loose, y'all. I got somebody, somebody right now has a need. I just put it on here. Put your need right there. Put your need right there, right now in Jesus name. Put your need right there. Go ahead. By faith. By faith. You see, one of the biggest acts of faith is that we actually put our word out there that God is going to do something. Okay. Exactly. Lathus. Exactly. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. God, we glorify you in Jesus name. We thank you, Lord. We're asking you to touch Lathus family. God, you know that need father, you know, specifically what that need is. And we're asking you to put a covering on it right now. Hallelujah. We're, we're praying for Renee's, um, for the hospice care for her husband, Joe. God, we don't know what your will is here, but we know, God, that we can seek it. We can find it. We can trust you. Hallelujah. That God will heal your sick kitty, poor sick kitty, Lord, you know, has diabetes. And God, right now, we love our, we love our cats. We love our animals. We're praying for this, this little cat, Lord, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, I thank you, Jesus. I praise you. I magnify you. Your word, Lord, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Oh my God, we love you. We thank you, Jesus. And we ask you, Father, we ask you right now in Jesus name, reveal yourself, Lord. Reveal yourself to each and every individual. Help us, God, to expand on your vision that men and women can see you more clearly. Father, forgive in, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Lord, almighty God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, right now, let your let the unction flow in your area where you're at, Lord, in Jesus' name. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, we thank you in Jesus' name. Oh, God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Father, forgive, to bless, to God, and to keep, to touch these families and reunite them, God, in Jesus' name, to help us, Father, with forgiveness for the sinner, and God, to help us with the sinner being able to forgive the sinner, to help us, God, to be the people that we need to be in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, my God. Benny, you're going to have to go, and uh, I'm probably going to mute you. Um, well, I'm late. I was fixing to mute him myself. Uh, he's, trying, he's trying to dominate and, and bring in a contrary spirit. We can't have that. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Right now, Kate, I just trust God right now to, to touch you. Oh, Jesus, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, right now, in Jesus' name. Not, not just the stomach, God, but peace in her spirit. 
Lord, give her peace in her spirit right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, right now. Oh, my God. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, toy soldier, don't feel doomed. Right now, we need to touch him, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we, we need to have a, an uplifting spirit, God. Give us an uplifting spirit. Give us, give us an uplifting spirit. Hallelujah. There's my wife right there, DSG. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. I don't know, Renee. I know it happens uh, with a lot of them. But I'm going to tell you like this, though. Um, I've known people that got to be terminal that had been mean all of their lives, and they became gentle as a, as a dove. So I don't know. I guess it is the um, the change in the hormones and stuff. That's the only thing that I can tell you. Oh God, you, Toy Soldier, you are you are love, bro. You're not doomed to any. Larry, you're here, man. Outstanding. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, bye days. Hallelujah, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we love you and praise you. We thank you. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kate, Sarah, Angela, Pete, get in there. I appreciate what y'all do. I know that y'all work hard. You know, we can't always get these guys, but we, I appreciate how quickly y'all react to a lot of these fellas in here. And I, I do because, you know, they, it gets a, it gets a, a mean bone up in me. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to say this one more time. We've got Thursday and Friday. If anybody wants Thursday and Friday to, uh, to continue to fast, um, it be the last time I bring this up for a little bit. All right. No soldier, we appreciate you. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I know that's right. My question tonight comes in, the Lord bringing me around to this. Um, not quite true. Um, but I'm going to talk about decision or commitment. And we're going to read tonight from James chapter 1. Okay, when I get around to reading here in a minute or two, or in an hour or two, or whenever, um, I call this the... Uh, it was a series that I did. I called it the intentional Christian. And, uh, this is the intentional Christian part number two. I don't know where part number one's notes are or, or if I even still have them because I used to loan my notes out to uh, young and upcoming preachers. And sometimes they didn't make it back home, but to give you an oversight that the, the intentional Christian is a person that gets up in the morning and faces the world and doesn't question whether they are Christians. Okay. Because I'm going to be Christ-like in the face of whatever I see. That doesn't mean I'm always, I'm always going to be right because I'm going to come short. Okay. Um, but God is always God. And so anyways, we're going to continue this up, this up. Um, Renee, I just want to pray for, for you and Joe real quick right now, if that's okay. And uh, Toy Soldier, what is your name? Um, I mean, I can call you Toy Soldier all night, but tell me what your name is so I can call you that. I mean, I know I, I, I like to call people by their name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kimberly. Okay, Kimberly Toy Soldier 2. I'm going to call you TS2. Perfect. I try to remember that. Um, so right now I want to pray right now in Jesus name, Lord, for Kimberly, God rejuvenate her spirit, Lord, in Jesus name. We're, we're asking this, but we're trusting this. Lord, it is your will, God, that you would minister to our sister right now in Jesus name, that you would usher into the room, Lord. And that you would help her to realize, Father, even if we don't make it through this valley, we're still going to make it to the throne room. Oh, 
Oh God, we ask you right now to rejuvenate her spirit, to encourage her in the Lord, God. Let the body of believers encompass her with the word of God, with the will, with the power, with the strength, with the desire, with the love of fellow like-minded believers. Let your spirit usher into the room and embrace her right now in Jesus' name. Just let her feel your love, oh Lord. We pray, we trust, hallelujah. Oh Jesus, right now, be with with uh, Renee and, and with Joe. God, this is a tough and terrible time. But God, we know that you're still God and we're asking you, Lord Jesus, to help them. Lord, as this transition time comes where we're having to turn loose of, of things that we have, have controlled all of our lives, as the emotional shipwreck, as the emotional tumultuous times come, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to touch Joe and ease his anger, ease his pain. Help him, Lord Jesus, to regain his self, Lord, that he can be the man that Renee has loved these little, these many years. We ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, to give Renee strength and to give her wisdom and understanding. You've already given her compassion. We ask you, Father, just to re remake your love with them, remold and reshape and rekindle the fires, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord Jesus, for Miss Sarah Lou and her family and her poor little kitty cat. There's so many needs, Lord, so many needs. We pray for that situation, God, we don't want to call out everything because there ain't no need. But Lord, you know everything that needs to be handled there. So we're going to pray and trust. We're going to believe in your word. We continue to pray for Kate and her stomach. God, give her an ease and give her the joy that comes with understanding that your will is being performed. Oh, God, be with Brooke while she travels. Oh, God, heal the heart, heal our hearts, heal our minds. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, and help us to be the people we need to be right now. Touch my wife, God, if she's working this kidney stone, I can't, I can't tell you what it is, Lord, to go through it. Look, she's gone through them by herself because I don't know, and I don't want to find out, Lord, I'm a wimp. But God, heal her and ease this thing back, Lord. And if we need to go to the Kaiser tonight, that's what we'll do. But in Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, touch my wife. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Ilanda rakapaka hase rama. Ilata harama heni ki troko sotalamara ete. Inasya. Solomon Rocco Panamania. Let the peace of God, which passes understanding, dwell in your heart and inhabit your mind, comforting your mind and settling your emotions. Allow God's peace to usher in to your life. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, 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 hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. All glory to you, Lord. Oh, God. Ooh. The Lord just gave you that, didn't he, Sarah? I believe that's confirmation of what he just gave me. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. He will not forsake you. Amen. 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 Confirmation.
In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let the word be established. Let God's peace reign in your heart. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm not ready to start teaching just yet. I'm just going to sit here for a minute. And just let this, let this spirit move for a minute. Let some spirit settle for a minute. Let some, let some, let some, some of the cares of this world lose their color, lose their austerity to us. And just embrace, just embrace and let God embrace you. Embrace the will of the Lord. Just let it come to you. Sometimes you just sit there and you say, God will. Whatever your will, God will. I don't know. You know, um, if, if you look at the things that's happened in your life, a lot of times you sit there, you, if you look at it, you go, I don't know how I got out of that. Right? God will. God will. Mm. Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, him and people, him blessings, we are here to receive. Amen, Angela. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God will. God's will. And it's not always easy to, to, to bend ourselves to God's will. We know that. <clears throat> but God's will. Hallelujah, Jesus. I think that what I got here tonight is going to really fit nicely with this spirit that I'm feeling. I know that I'm feeling it right now. And like I told you, it's part of the, a series that I, I taught as a pastor, that I, and I call it The Intentional Christian. And the intentional Christian is the person that gets up out of bed not questioning whether they are Christian, whether they are going to go for the, uh, what are they going to do? I, I told y'all, I write songs. I'm not, I'm not telling you I write hit songs. I'd say write songs. <clears throat> and, and I make up little corny ways to do it to reinforce what I did. And I'd ride down the road and, um, I would sing. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I'm sorry. But, um, one of the, one of the songs that I, I wrote was, um, I got my mind made up and it, it's, it's dumb. Okay. But it fell in with the intentional Christian series and it went, it just goes, it goes, I got my mind made up. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm going to follow Jesus. I got my mind made up. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm living every day for the Lord. I got my mind made up. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm going to follow Jesus, and every day I submit my way to the will of the Lord. And anyway, there's some, some other words, but that was the, the chorus to it. And it helped me sometimes just to push through and say, you know what? It's not going to be a question of what's going to happen here, okay? All right? It's not a question of what we're going to do. We're going to serve God. That's true, Sarah. That's true right there. Amen. Okay. I'm ready to launch, y'all. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading from the book of James. I love James. <clears throat> the book of James, chapter 1, starting in verse 19. I'm going to read through 27. And then we're going to chat a little bit. Starting in verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. 
For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. At some point, we made a decision to follow God, okay? And I always make this point. I, I was raised in a church where you made a decision to follow church, follow God every about every every second or third Sunday, um, and what little bit we went to church, we we were not raised in church. Understand that, please. Um, what little bit that we did go to, you know, that we got in there and that, oh, you know, because if you went down and, and, as a young person, if you went down and you made a decision to follow Christ, they gave you a, a piece of candy. So, needless to say, we got saved every week. Um, so, um, the decision is simple. Okay? You can decide to jump off into the water, okay? But once you've jumped, you've reached the point of commitment. There is no turning back. And that is what I'm saying. A decision to follow the Christ is good. It's nice, it's wonderful. But a commitment puts us to the point where we're not turning back. We're not negotiating our salvation. We're not we're not over here talking to the devil, wanting to know whether there might be a better deal for us down the line. We're watching, uh, my wife and I, we watch these different, we've been show these things, and we're watching some of these things with lawyers and stuff, and 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 they, they, they go back and forth, and, and you know, the, here's this, they offer this deal, they go back and they offer another deal, they go back and they offer another deal, and it's all about a compromise, and, and, and in these compromises, somebody is always moving their position. I want to position this for you to understand that Satan is at this point over here on the left. And he's saying, I want you dead, burning in hell. And when you get there, I'm not going to like you. You're not going to be welcome. You're, I want to destroy everything you've got. I don't want you to have not one one minuscule point of joy in your life. I want everything in your life to be absolutely horrific. Okay. And here on this side over here, Jesus is wanting the absolute opposite for you. And he's, and here you are, you're the Christian, you're standing on this far wall, and you're saying, I want to live for God, I want to stay with God, I'm going to do it, right? And at some point, for some stupid reason, we listen to the guy across the street over here, and he says, if you'll just take one step off of that wall right there, I'll leave you alone, right? And, and I'm going to tell you right now, I've seen Christians, once they come off that wall, they might as well be the dead run back to the other side of the road. Because once you break the commitment, okay, once you step off of that wall, once you compromise who you are in God Almighty, then it's an easy slide back to the other side. That's why they call it backsliding. Okay? So I don't want, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go back to where I was, okay? Um, and, and, and we talk about it being a step. We talk about being a walk. We talk about being a journey. And, and I like to use it like this. Every day I get up and I take my first steps in my walk with the Lord, okay? And the reason that I call it a walk with the Lord is because I'm going to leave from this point and I'm going to come back to this point. I get up out of my bed. I'm going to walk around do my day and I'm going to be back in my bed. It's a walk, okay? And so my daily walk with the Lord. And when I string those days together, they become a journey because we're moving closer to God, 
okay? We're moving closer to God day in and day out, each one with a walk, when I walk with the Lord. When uh, my daughter stayed with us for a little while, um, she had a, um, we had an apartment in the basement she lived in there. And so I convinced her to get up in the morning and we would walk together, she and I. We would just take a walk down the road. I did, I sorely miss those walks. Okay, and when she finally moved out, she said, you know, she said, everything I'm going to miss, she said, I'm going to miss y'all. She said, but I'm going to miss our walks. Okay, because we talked about who knows what. We talked about how to make tea and simple syrup and stuff that, you know, that interested her. And we talked about prayer and we talked about living for God. But we talked about new cars and old cars and family members and non-family members and, and, you know, playing baseball and softball. We talked is the point. Okay, and so I miss that. All right, we've moved up here to the mountains. She's she's uh she's moved. She's in a different town, so um you know we don't get to have that. It, how much would we give for that? Wouldn't you Wouldn't you love that? Okay, um so, but it's a it's a each day is a walk, and when we put them together, we're on a lifelong journey because we have committed our way to the will of the Lord. When we get up in the morning, the first thing I like to do is in the morning, I just thank God. Thank you, Lord. You gave me breath, woke me up. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Nothing special yet. Thank God. Okay. Because if there's anything special that wakes you up, it generally is not going to be positive. Y'all know that. So thank God. I wake up, boom, here we go. And we're moving. Folks, let me tell you. It's great to wake up serving God. It's great to wake up knowing that, hey, you know what? Even if I don't make it through today, to die is to be with Jesus. To live is to have Jesus being with me. Okay? I want to be an intentional Christian. So at some point, we we decide we'll follow Christ. And so we take these steps towards him. And then we see the scope. Here's what I, I try to work with Christians. Um, Kimberly, if you're still with us right here now. Larry, if you're with us right here now. Kate, um, Sarah Lou, one of the things that I try to deal with people is, is that when we see the scope of what has to be done to rectify the situation that we're in, if we're not careful, we will look at it and let it all us. Okay, we will diminish ourselves in the face of what we see has to be done for us to achieve what God has put before us to get done. Now, I want you to know, you don't need to self-diminish. You need to stand proud and allow yourself to grow into those positions, those areas, those um, those voids. Grow into it. Don't let it diminish you. I read. Uh, I, I think I've read pretty much everything Louis L'Amour ever written. Okay, I love to read his books. They're always, you know, they're, they're basically wholesome and stuff. But he wrote about some of the people going to the West, and he said, the, for the first time in history, as men moved into the West. Okay, they weren't known as who they were back there. And it's a beautiful analogy of, of who we are in Christ. He said, these men would walk in with every step they took, they, be, they go bigger and bigger and bigger. As they learn to be self-reliant, they grew bigger and bigger. As we in the church learn to be reliant on God Almighty, that we can step out on faith, we will grow bigger and bigger and bigger. We don't get any bigger, Lord willing, Okay, we don't get any taller, we don't get any fatter, but we get bigger, spiritually speaking. We become more powerful. And so I say this to you again, when you see the scope of what needs to be done, don't let it diminish you. Take larger steps and say, Lord, thou will be done. Just take another step, take another step and grow into whatever it is that's facing you. When you see the disposition of, of the of the the enemy, as he starts to see you coming, if you are, if the Lord will open your your um, spiritual eyes and give you the discerning spirit that you need, and you start to see that Satan is falling back, he's not coming after you. 
The devil doesn't come after Christians. He attacks from the sides. He's always flanking. He's not going to come directly at you because we're walking in the name of Jesus. Our shield is out here, our shield of faith. He don't want nothing to do with our faith. He wants to come around and see whether he can sneak in behind you and, and stick you in the foot or something, in the ankle, and try and find your Achilles heel. But we don't have one when we trust in God Almighty, okay? So that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. When, when we see the scope of what needs to be done to please him and we decided whether to make a commitment in our lives to begin a lifelong journey, okay, and you're saying, okay, hold on. A lifelong journey. And I'm going to tell you right now, I, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't not say this. Whether my wife decides to serve God tomorrow or not, I believe she will. She's done so for 35 years or so. Okay, pretty good odds on it. Whether I deserve, decide to serve God tomorrow or not, she should go on serving God. Okay, whether I decide to serve, whether she decides to serve, then we should continue to serve God, okay? And so we're not going to negotiate with no snot, no snaggletooth devil. We're not entering into a, a negotiation with him because he doesn't have anything to offer you. Look at the temptation on the mount. He comes before Jesus. He didn't offer Jesus bread, he didn't offer him bread. He said, e e turn them rocks into bread. I know you're hungry. Okay. And Jesus answered him with the word. And then he turned and he said, hey, um, see all these kingdoms? Bow down and worship me. And I will give you these kingdoms. <sighs> That's not an offering of something. All of his kingdoms he is the author of chaos. He is the author of lies and destruction. All of his kingdoms are desolation. He's not offering you anything. If you think for a minute that you're going over to, 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 to do things with Satan, that he's got something good planned for you, you are absolutely wrong. He is wanting the very worst for you. The devil is a liar. The truth is not in him. So he's saying, oh, well, you know, if you bow down, uh, you know, to me, I'll give you these kingdoms. The kingdoms are nothing. They're desolation. Okay? He's not offering you something. He's offering you literally nothing. Okay? Desolation is nothingness. Okay? There's nothing good there. There's nothing holy there. There's nothing godly there. There's nothing nothing sweet there. All of it is desolation, absences of God. Okay? And then he tells him, hey, jump off this cliff. Your angels will catch you. Okay, trying to tempt him, but thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Okay? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So when we're committed to God, we are the most scariest thing that the, de that the demons over there can possibly see, a Christian who is not wavering. Remember now, I'm not telling you you won't get tested. Look at Job, okay? Here comes Job, and, and he's got everything, and he's, everything's lovely and wonderful, and boom, the next thing you know, man, all of his kids are dead. Then all of his donkeys are gone. Then all of his, everything's gone. And he got nothing left but his wife, and he never, ever turned around and cursed God because he realized he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He realized that I've got to stay in my mark, in my calling. And God gave him back twice what he had before. God, going with God is always the right answer. The lifelong journey, as we draw closer to God, it becomes more rich with us every day. The beauty, the wonder of holiness, the wonder of loving God becomes better every day. It, it gets better and it gets better and it gets better. Hallelujah. I'm sorry about that, Larry. I had a similar something happened to me. So um, so we begin. Now, I got a, a scripture that I'm supposed to look up. Luke 18, verse number 8. 18. 18, oh, it's 1818. And I'm going to, I'm going to read this. 
It's Luke 18 to verse 18. All right, hold on a second. We're going to get in a second here. Luke number 18. I'm going to read something for us. It's a, it's a pretty good read here. Luke 18, verse 18 to 30. Okay. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth and up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, that thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. Hallelujah. Now, Everybody focuses on the the eye of the needle as though there's somebody sitting there with a needle in their hand. That's not what it is. If you do your research, you will find out that what happened is, is in these big cities at night, they would close the, the, the gates. Hello, Rob. They would close the gates to the city to keep invading forces out. But on the side of the of the of the door there was there was a doorway and quite literally it was called the eye of the needle okay and so the uh the the eye of the needle was there and you could actually get a camel through it but what you had to do is you had to take the camel and pull the burdens off of it pull the loads off of it so that there was nothing there but camel and the camel could then bend down and go under and into the city, okay? So it wasn't impossible to for the camel to go through the eye of the needle. It wasn't impossible at all, okay? But it was difficult. And that's what Jesus is pointing out. If we allow the cares of the world, riches, okay, it could be family. It can be peer pressure. It can be a lot of things. If we allow these things to hold precedence in our lives, that we're carrying the burdens of the world around with us. I got to be cool, man. Come on, man. I got to be cool, man. Folk be looking at me and they don't think I'm cool, man. Okay? If that's what happens, then you're not going to be able to get through there because with all those burdens on you, you can't get through that door. That door is too small to go through with all of the worldly accoutrements that we've got attached to us. And so we got to dump some of these things off, maybe all of them, and just walk through and be in the kingdom of God. We repent of them. We die out to them. We say, hey, listen, you know what? Without repentance, there's no remission of sin. Let me repent. Let's get in here and let's move here forward. Let's let's move from this point and forward. Let's go into the kingdom. I don't want to be left out. When 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 I would deal with my um, my high school students, when I would have parent and teacher conferences, I didn't teach high school. I taught Sunday school. And every once in a while, a, a, a parent would come to me and they would ask me. They'd say, "Well, now, Brother Claire, what do you, you know? What what's going on? I, I I can't I can't reach my child." And I would tell them, "I said you have to understand." That if you list the top 
10 influences in, in young person behavior, the first five will be peer pressure. I said, the reason that I say it that way is you for you to understand the intensity of the peer pressure on these children today. It was bad when I was a kid. We didn't have social media, okay? We didn't have to worry. If you look like a goof nut, one person saw it and everybody laughed. But now they put it on face page. They put it on, on the, 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 the gram attacks. They put it all over the place. And there's your child in some weird looking, got their face all screwed up, right? And it's all over the, the internet, okay? So it's, it's way much worse. And that, so they're trying to get people to like them so that you know, on one point, they won't do that to them. Okay, bullying reached a new level. Um, but the whole point is that they're so influenced by peer pressure that anything coming in second is so far down the line a second that it is horrendous before they ever make that. So they're, they're they got a they got a peer pressure when they get on the school bus going there. They got a, a group of peers there. They get off. They go to first period. Every class has a different group of peer pressure. Uh, gym class, you know everything. There's always one. Well, thank you, Tom Wisdom. I appreciate that. Every Every class has a, a peer pressure group. And so these kids are trying to shape shift in reality to be the cool person in the next group. Okay. Um, I was smart and I played chess. Okay. So when I played chess, I won. Okay. I, I, I didn't get beat at chess from the time I was 12 until I was a senior in high school. I got beat one time by my coach, who was a football coach. And then I mopped the floor with him because I realized that what he was doing. And he had, he had one scenario that he played. And uh, I went up there and all the, everybody, I, I let everything else rain in on me. And I, I flew around and let him beat me. And, and he was being all Mr. Smuggy Duggy stuff. And I, think, and I wiped the floor with him. And... Uh, I, I wiped the floor with him two days in a row, and uh, he didn't like me no more. He gave me my last paddling in school because he taught business math. <laughs> so he gave me, I had his business math class, and uh, he gave me my last paddling in school. But, uh, you know, we didn't have the kind of peer pressure that they have and the, the social stigma that follows them around. So understanding that, okay, we need to be more attentive to the needs of our children in a way that, face it, our parents weren't. Okay? My daddy used to say stuff to us. He'd say, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, boy. If you're going to be dumb, you better be tough. Okay? Because that's how I rolled. Okay? If, if, you, if you did something dumb at school and, and, and everybody laughed at you, come back and tell me so I can laugh with them. Okay? Um, but but it ain't that way today. And and face it and like it or not, these children have been raised tender. The the testosterone rates in the boys is way 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 down. Okay, that's scientifically proven. This has got nothing to do with with beating up on kids and stuff. I'm telling you, it's not there. And they're they're coming in and they're attacking it. I understand. My son was telling me he he did some research and he found out that. A lot of these bottled water companies, there's estrogen in there. And I'm like, dude, I don't want no estrogen. I'm just going to be straight up with you, guys. I, you know, I like being a guy, okay? And and I've always liked being a guy. I've never wanted to be a girl, all right? I never understood why a guy would want to be a girl. I never understood why a girl would want to be a guy, except that we have more fun than they do. And in and, and my way of thinking, what I do is fun. And, and you know, and my wife looks at it and goes, Pfft. I don't do that. Okay, so boom, all right? We're made different for a reason, all right? Now, so anyhow, so we, we, we try to get these things to understand that the, the, the cares of this world for this young person to get through the eye of the needle, to divest of all of that, is something that we didn't actually have to do as kids. Thank you, Kate. I don't know what was going on there, but I'm, I'm sure... That wasn't something we needed to hear about. Uh, so, 
So, so the eye of the needle and if I want to be, if I want to be great in the kingdom of God, and I do, okay, I want to be great in the kingdom of God. And I think we all do. And I hope we all do. Okay. Because it's not a race against you or the next person. It's a race against me. It's, hey, Eva, it's a race against me. I call it yester me. Okay. I want to be better than the guy I was yesterday. I want to, I want to have more word in me. I want to be more attentive to the word. I want to be more attentive to the gospel. I want to be more sensitive to the spirit. Okay. Than I was yesterday. And, and the people say, well, I don't see how you can get any more. I don't know how to do. I don't know how to be any less. I'm just simply trying to better myself in Christ. I'm not trying to be better than you. I'm trying to be better than me. And if we keep that in focus, we realize that the race never did belong to the strongest or the fastest, but to he that endures to the end. So that's what we want to continue to keep in mind there, okay? Is we're seeking to find our purpose in our journey. Whatever God wants you to do, okay? God puts you into purpose, boom. And it's and it's actually most of the time it's a big old purpose. Bloop, right? But then you start asking yourself, hold on a second. Once I'm in my purpose, he begins to define you within your purpose. Okay? You become defined within the purpose so that you become honed in. Okay? You become targeted. All right? You're, you're, you're um, live and, and, and ready to go out and do all those, those, those good things. Okay? So, um, let me see now. Put a bit of a we come into a, accept the question of you, and we want to ask about our questions. I'm going to move to my next scripture, which is John 21. Y'all forgive me, my tongue tripped right about there. Uh, John 21, verses 15 to 22. And it says, So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord. Thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again, a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Now remember now, Simon done denied him three times. He saith unto him, Yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him a third time, Simon, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto you, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walked where thou wouldest. But when thou art old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved following, and that would be John, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. My purpose, say it with me, whoever you're at, just go ahead. My purpose, my calling, my purpose, my business, not left, not right, my purpose. If you continue in that, if you continually walk towards the purpose God has given you, the calling that God has put in your life, okay? Don't worry about the lefties and the righties. There's nothing you can do with them anyways, okay? the best thing you can do is provide a good example. So if they look over there in your lane, they go, wow. 
I'm encouraged because I see that person doing well. Okay, that's that's the, the, Peter's over here, and he's like, you know, I see what you're saying, Lord. I'm gonna have to go to the cross. What about that guy there? What about him? You know, don't worry about him. God's got something great for you. God's got some, and listen, in being greatness in God, there's going to be trials. There's going to be some things that aren't going to be fun. But the question is, how will I finish the race? How will I finish this race? I want to finish the race well. I want to finish the race in the will of God. I want to finish the race knowing that I have done the best I could. With what I had, I did the best I could. Lord, forgive me for anything else. Help me, Lord, to be the best me I can be. Because I can't be anybody else. I can't be Larry or Pete. I can't be Sarah, or Sarah Lou or Kate or Angela or any of y'all. I can't be y'all. I can only be me. And in being me, I need to be the best me I can be. Okay, so poet. All right? So don't walk in the flesh, okay? And that, that's, what, that's what Peter was, he sort of took a little, if you will, he took a little excursion there into the flesh. Okay, what do you mean he took an excursion into the flesh? Well, that's what he did. Okay, if you go to Romans 8, 1 through 9. It's not on the wrong page. Okay, there it is. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit, I'm sorry, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay? That's right, Tom. You're the only one that can walk your walk. Okay? Thank you, Echo. If we're, if we're focused on carnality, that's where we're going to go. I remember when I was learning to drive, um, I was riding down with my mother, and, uh, and, and it was one of my first experiences driving at night. I was just 15. I was driving at night. And as we're going down the road, thank you, Eva. As we're going down the road, um, she said, now don't look into the headlights of the car coming at you because you tend to go where you're looking. And that was just such a, a lesson for me, not just not driving, because I actually learned to drive without looking. Now, when I'm saying that, I, I mean, what I mean is to see everything that's happening at one time so that you're not focusing on something and therefore driving into the, to the lights. But it made so much sense to me. If that's what you're looking at, that's what you're going at. If, if what you're looking at are, is carnal things all the time, I was... Looking on the, uh, uh, the the Facebook today, and uh, I, I like to watch reels, and sometimes, you know, I like to watch people catching fish and stuff, and they had attached a 20-second reel to the back side of this reel that was absolutely obscene. I was like, what on is going on? I mean, it was, it was porn. 
Plain and simple. That's, it. That's all that you could say about it. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm busy trying to get off of it because, you know, I don't, I don't need all that garbage. And, but it's like, hold on a second. You, you attach this to the end of this reel. So you're watching this guy catch a fish and the next thing you know, you're uh, it's like, oh my God, it's filth. Okay. We got to mind what we're looking at and not focus on the wrong things. And you can very easily focus on the wrong things. And if you do, if you allow yourself to be swayed, if, you, if you're focusing on the things that, that are not going to help you, if they're not going to help you, they're, they're going to keep you from getting better. Now, when I say it, listen, I want you to understand something, okay? Here it is. If you think for one minute that as you're floating down life forever here, okay, um, if, if you're not going to paddle, if you want to go upstream, you're going to have to paddle. If you want to go downstream, you're going to have to paddle, at least to guide yourself because you can't get too close to this rock over here or you you don't want to run over this, this log and a snag. Oh, look at that. I got me a boat. Thank you, Sarah Lou. <laughs> Okay, I got a boat. <laughs> so, but, but you know, you got to guide yourself if you go down the river. You got to make sure you got to stay in the middle channel. You got to stay away from the sandbars. We was um, we were exactly stumbling blocks. We was in the um, uh, the Yellow River down there one time. My brother was kayaking down it, and uh, was doing pretty good. You know, I mean, that's bass fishing is fun to do. You know, we're riding up through there. And, and all of a sudden, there's a creek that came in on the left over here. And when it did, it, it washed. It was a sandbar right in the middle of the river. And I went, Toom. I was like, right in the middle of the river. I was on, I'm talking about this much water. I was like, wow. Because you don't think about it being in the middle of the river. Well, thank you for the heart, fairly. You don't think about it being in the middle of the river. Okay. So you have to be ever vigilant. Just because you're 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 on the mountain, remember this: if you're on the mountain dancing around, watch out because there's only cliffs on the mountain. There ain't no cliffs in the valley. The valley floor might be dangerous, but you don't have to worry about falling off a cliff. It's like um, one of them fellas was talking about when he uh, he got said I gone drunk. He said I laid down on the, on the floor. And passed out, and the guy said, well, why did you lay down on the floor? He said, because you can't fall off the floor. And I was like, well, okay, drunk logic 101, you know. Um, but it's true, you can't fall off the floor, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, so we got to focus, and you got to keep your mind set, no matter where you are, how wonderful it is on the mountain. Don't fall off the cliff. How horrible it is in the valley. Don't forget to take water with you. The water of life. Take Jesus with you everywhere you go. Focus on him every day and every step you take. Now, I know I know that everybody, listen, we have carnal moments and all that good stuff. I'm, that, my point is that you recover from anything sinful as quickly as you can. Okay? So if you... If you catch yourself looking at something you ought not be looking at, doing something you ought not be doing, stop, repent, and walk away. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Because, you see, Peter looked over at John. He goes, what about him? When what he should have been doing was worried about what, how he was going to make it to his own end and be just in the end, to be right with God. When I re get ready to meet my maker, I want to meet him on certain terms. I don't want to meet him halfway in that boat, Sarah shot me. You know, y'all noticed it wasn't tied up. I was going to shoot up money. me. I noticed if I put a foot in it, it was gone. Okay. So James, let me see if I can get back. Okay. So James 19, 119. Let me get back on James 119 for real quick. Here it is right now. Okay. James 1, 19, we're going to verse by verse here real quick. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Get a grip on your anger, okay? Swift, swift 
to hear. Okay. One of my teachers, at least one of my teachers used to tell me, there's a reason you got two ears and one mouth. Okay. <laughs> you go feed them calves. There's a reason that that you got two ears and one mouth. You should hear twice as often as you speak. That's that's what we're always told. Um, but if we if we will take and practice listening to what the other person is saying, and, and here's what: um, Have you ever dealt with a person? You were having a conversation. You were trying to tell them, and and you can tell they're not really listening to you. They're thinking of what they're going to say next. That ain't listening. Okay, because listening and hearing are two different things. We hear everything, okay? All right? We hear everything all at one time, but we're not attending to it, so we're not listening. Listening is an active verb. Hearing is a passive verb. I hear the crickets. I hear the cicadas out there, but I'm not paying them any attention. I'm paying attention to what I'm saying to you. Y'all can hear the crickets. I know you can but you're listening, Lord willing, to what I'm saying so that we're attending to what is being said, all right? So we we listen to it before we decide what we're going to say, okay? We attend to what was said, and then we think about it. This is tougher. We think about who it, who said it, how they were feeling, what their position is with you, and then try and correlate it into what they meant. I told y'all the other day about an exercise that I did with a, with a couple, and and I told the, uh, the the man and woman they were having trouble, and and I I said I said let me let me let me give you a clue. I said write down write down what you said, write down what you're going to say. I told her write down what you're going to say. I said now, um, and then I take him in there and I said now tell her what you want to say, and he tells her what he wants to say. Okay, and then I have him get up and leave the room. I said, you know, without speaking, write down what he just told you. And she wrote down what he should tell him, right? And he goes in the other room and I tell him, you know, he comes back in and I say, okay, now just nothing but, just go ahead and tell him what it is you want to say. She tells him and I have her get up and leave. And I said, now, without talking about it, write down what she just said to you. And so he writes it down and then they come back in. Now they both got written down what they said. And then on this, and then what they heard, and then she's over there, and she's got what she said and what she heard. And uh, I said, "Okay, read your read your statement to her." You read it out. I said, "Now read what you heard." And she reads it out, and he goes, "That is nothing like what I was saying." Okay, I said, "Okay, fine." I said, "Now you read out your statement." She reads out what she said, and he reads out what he heard, and and she's over, and she's like. How did you get that? And I said, that's because you're not attending. You're not listening to what they're saying. You're allowing outside influences. You're already mad. You're already angry. You're already tired. The dishes need to be washed and uh, the, the clothes need to be done. The kids are nasty, needing baths. You're, you're tired from work. Your, your feet ache. Your car needs work. You need gas in the car. You got money problems. Okay. All of these things are figuring in and they're causing you not to listen to the person across the table. Okay. And because of that, you're, you're not hearing what is said. Okay. And, and so a lot of times, Kate, that's a beautiful thing to do. You say, now, what did you hear me say? Okay. What did you hear me say? What did I say? Okay. And let them repeat it back to you. And yeah, sometimes you're over there and, and my wife and I do this. And sometimes she'll be over there and she'll be like, because I'm a guy. Okay. And, uh, you know, so uh, often enough times, you know, I'm not listening. <laughs> you know? But then again, fair is fair. Lots of times she ain't listening. But the point is, is when we're having a real honest to goodness discussion, okay, an honest to goodness discussion, we put things down. Put your phone down. Okay. Put it down. Eye contact matters. Okay. Make it. 
You know, that's, that's one of the things. Look at the person that's talking to you. Get the full 65% of communication is nonverbal. So if the person's sitting up there going, yeah, I'll go with you, and you're getting a, a, a no, I'm not going, they're not going. Okay? They are not going. You, Yes, I'm going. I, I, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yep. I like that. I like it. No, you don't. Don't lie. Okay? But most 65%, at least 65% of a conversation is the nonverbals. Okay? It's the expression that the person is making at you. It's one of the things, the smile, are they, are they, is their face tense? Are their eyes intent? Are they looking at you? Where they're looking? At, and I'm going to tell you right now, if once you learn to watch people's eyes, you start catching liars in a hurry. Okay? If I'm going to tell you about a story that I, I remember from, from school, we look up and we start to remember. Okay? If you look down, you're fixing the lie. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Okay? But it works. Okay? That you, you, you look up in your memory. You're, oh, yeah. I remember going, me and Randy and, and Tony, on that fishing boat, you know. Right? And yeah. No, baby, I never dated anybody, but, you know, oops. <laughs> okay. All right. So, anyways, you learn to communicate. Okay? Learning how to receive messages is as important as learning how to give them. Learning how to make a good message. Learning to to illustrate. These are all things that we work on in soul winning. How do I win somebody to God? You can't win them to God if they can't get the message. Okay? If you go out there, we can sing Jesus loves me, this I know, all day long. All right? But if they're not attending, we haven't got their attention, it doesn't really matter. Okay? So, next scripture is verse number 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. This is where we're trying to get people, right? Okay? This is, there it is. This is where we're trying to get people. Okay, but we've got to put some things down because we don't want them to get the patty cake Jesus message. We want them to get the real core of the message. Jesus died for you. Okay, I'm, a, I'm an Acts 2.38 preacher. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Live an overcomer's life. Okay? Don't predicate Jesus this thing. The epistles were not the apostles' wives. They were letters written by the apostles to the church. Understand that. That's why there's nobody saved in the epistles. They weren't saved in the epistles. These were written to churches, which would be, there would be an understanding that we already have something in common. All right, we're all saved. I'm not writing to tell you how to get saved. I'm telling you how to stay living in a saved state. I'm writing to encourage you. Okay, so anyhow, um, swift to hear, laying apart the filthiness and, and superfluity. Okay, that be, and, and this is one that gets people right here. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. So many people beat themselves up and fool themselves. Be ye not doer, be not be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. If you hear what God said and you recognize it as truth, you get to choose to do it or not do it. That's on you. Nobody's gonna twist your arm and run over there and try and trip you and make you come to God. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's somebody out there that will. But in reality, that's not going to get you in heaven. I remember reading about when the Moors come across Spain, the Muslims, and they come across Spain back in the, the, the early crusade years, what was it, eight, nine hundred kind of stuff, and they come across... And as they come across, they come across Spain and they, they put their knife to the throat. They knock the person down. They put their knife to the throat. They say, do you accept Islam? Okay. Now, if he said yes, wonderful. I got a convert. If he said no, you cut his throat or you enslaved him. Hello, Jenna. Prayed for you today, girl. I hope your today went better than, than earlier. Okay. And so it went better 
they, 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 they slayed him, bam, right? And you're like, wait a minute, hold on a second. Now they get up and they start learning the precepts of Islam, okay? But they didn't want to be Islamic. I do the same thing when I get ready and I want to preach God's word to people. If I twist your arm and I can say, you know, if I, I can twist your arm and, and, and get you to, okay, 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 I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, right? <laughs> well, look at there. Well, you just got us a new member in the church. No, you didn't. Because as soon as you turn your back, they're going to go right back to doing what they were doing before because they didn't want to. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't want to. They didn't make a commitment and they certainly didn't, didn't make, you know, they made a decision, but they didn't make a commitment. They made a decision to say something to get you to quit twisting their arm. If you're going to win people to God, it's going to be because you're going to teach them love. You're going to teach them about loving God Almighty. You're going to teach them about the love that God has for them through Jesus Christ. That's what wins people to God. That's how they come to God. They don't come because we beat them up and make them. Okay? That schoolyard kind of stuff just doesn't work. Okay? The good news gospel. That's right, dude. That's right. The good news gospel. We lay lay apart all filthiness, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Because see, we got, listen, Christian is a generic word in today's market. And what I mean about that is, thank you, Jenna. What I mean about that is, is that it is generic. Everybody and their brother calls themselves a Christian. And you're like, okay, wow, hallelujah. We got all these Christians. And then they start talking and you're like, oh my gosh. Well, you know, um, there's one guy, and, and listen, this is one guy, okay, and he called himself a Christian. Now, I, I didn't meet him. I was told about him. My, my, my bishop told me about this guy. They said, and he goes into a bar, wherever the bar, and he sits down next to a guy, and he says, Jesus loves you. And the guy goes, fine. He goes, thank God you're saved because I told you about Jesus. Because I said Jesus to you, you're saved. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay. That's wrong on so many levels because the devils in hell believe and tremble, but they're not saved. Okay, so there's gotta be more to it. So then it says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. I want you to think about that. Michael Jackson did that song. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not promoting Michael Jackson songs, but, uh, he was one of the greatest entertainers of, of my lifetime. Um, uh, he had more talent than, than anybody had a right to have. All right. But anyhow, um, looking at the man in the mirror. And when we look at the man, in the mirror, when we see that guy, that's the person we can change. The one person that I can honestly change. If I'm wanting to, all right, I want to lose 20 pounds. And when I lose that 20 pounds, I'm going to want to lose 20 more and be straight up with you, okay? But if I'm going to lose 20 pounds, okay, I know who it is that's going to have to do the losing of the 20 pounds. It's moi right here, okay? I can't get, uh, Larry, I need you to lose 20 for me, man. Larry got to lose 20 pounds. I'm still no better off than I was, okay? Uh, listen, uh, Finn's here. Hey, Finn, listen, I need you to lose 20 pounds for me, buddy. We had this conversation today, all right? You can't lose 20 pounds for another person. You can't do that. But I have to look at myself in the mirror, and I have to decide and make up my mind that I am going to do what it takes, all right? And, and let me tell you right now, the number one exercise you can possibly do is you can take both of your thumbs like this, do them like this, and push yourself away from the table, okay? Quit eating so that gum much. Start doing right by yourself, okay? And the next thing you know, 
you start to lose a pound or two here, okay? Lose a pound here, lose a pound there. Okay, thank you, Jenna. So that's that, that's what I'm saying. If I look in the mirror, if I want if I want to be a more spiritual person, if I want to be closer to God, if I want to know more about God's word, I know exactly who I need to be talking to about it. That guy in the mirror. I know exactly who's going to have to read that word for me to have the word hidden in my heart. If anybody's going to read the Bible for me, it's going to be me. Okay. If I want to have, if if I want to have a closer walk with God, if I want to have a a more intense prayer life, I'm the one that's going to have to put the time in. Okay. So when you see yourself, and, and sometimes it's an exercise sometimes in futility, but I, I, teach, I teach people to do this. I said, have you ever talked to yourself in the mirror? And I've gotten every response that I've ever wanted to get. I don't, I'm not going to tell you that I've gotten every one that I could get, but I've gotten every one I ever wanted to get. Have you ever talked to yourself in the mirror? You walk into the mirror and you have a good talking to with yourself. I'm going to tell you, when... Uh, <laughs> Uh, when, when, uh, that's right, Larry, I went, when, when my first wife decided that, uh, that, that she didn't want to be my wife anymore and she did, um, she wanted to, uh, she wanted to invest her time with other males. And so she did the, the responsible thing and left because I wasn't pretending like I was going to be real nice about it. Um, so I look, I, I literally went in and I, I, I had a mirror in it and I looked in that mirror and I sit there and I looked at myself and I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm doing the questioning thing, you know, why did she leave? What is wrong with you that she left you? What, what was it? Now, in my estimation and retrospect, when I look back, I pretty much realized that, you know, um, where we loved one another, we weren't in love. Okay. And so, Hey, Sarah Lou, we're glad you're here. She got a slew of eggs, y'all. Dadgum it. From omelets in the morning. So, as we do this, I'm, when I looked in the mirror, and I was asking myself, okay, what, why, why did she leave? And, and like I said, in retrospect, we married, we weren't, um, we weren't head over heels. Um, but, you know, uh, it just didn't, we didn't have enough, um, love for one another to, to hold together. Well, I did. I, I felt like I did. I, I felt like I would probably still be married to her today if she hadn't left me. But by and large, I couldn't stop her leaving. So she was gone. You made another and you were gone. Anyhow. And so she's gone. And so I went to, to the mirror and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, you know, what, why don't you leave? And I'm looking at myself like, I got my shirt off, you know, and I was not ripped. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, I was 155 pounds. Okay. Um, five foot nine, 155 pounds, <clears throat> nothing there, nothing special. I'm sitting here looking at myself in the master. I know why did, why did she leave? You know, and not, not the physical part. Okay. Okay. It's hard. Not the physical part. Why did she leave you? The whole person concept. Why did, why did she leave? And, and I was like, you know, okay. And so I, I made up my mind. I said, okay, in five years, when she's looking back, okay, one of the reasons that I didn't go into drunken squalor and, and, and all kinds of self-deprecation is I, I, I had a little talk with myself, literally had a little talk with myself in the mirror. And I said, in five years, when she looks back, I used a different vernacular, but I said, I'll be dadgum if she's going to look back and go, thank God I left that. Okay. Now, I don't even know if she's on TikTok. We're friends on Facebook. We have a son together, so we got to keep up with each other. We're, we're, we're friendly. Okay. I don't know her. Man, we ain't slept under the same roof since 1985. So, you know, I mean, you know, she's gone. She lived her life and all that good stuff. But she, she did say more than once that, uh, that that she made a mistake. And I'm like, you know, that was a train that left the station. But I, I was like, you know, when she left, I looked in the mirror and I said, 
I want to make sure that in the the time to come, okay, yeah, in the time to come, when she looks back, she's going to say, you know what? Made a mistake there. Okay? Made a mistake. I'm not asking. I didn't want her to come groveling back. I didn't want her back. Okay? Um, she told me one time, she said, that we're going to be good friends. And I said, I looked at her, I said, I can trust my friends. I, you know, I, I can't trust you. You know, you were playing the game. I was over here being Johnny Good Troop and, you know, and being, being, you know, Mr. Diligent Husband and stuff. And, you know, there you are, you'll be in, you know, what you were. So anyway, um, those things are, are beside the point. I looked at me. I didn't look at her. I looked at me. And I asked myself where I wanted to be in five years. Did I want to be a good person? Okay. Or did I want to be a failure? And I was like, you know what? That's when I'm going to have it. And so that, that was what, I, from that point forward, I, I made sure that I kept myself, you know, to being a better person than I was before. Ooh, I got coffee, y'all. <laughs> what a woman. <laughs> How you feeling? She's hurting, y'all. She's got a kidney stone. I'll be right back. Y'all don't go to work. Oh. Are you on the phone? Some people pause their life. I don't know how to do that. So, anyways, yeah, rejection is very difficult, man. It, it is. And, uh, you know, and, and, and it, it, it worked on me, uh, you know. It worked on me. But, uh, anyways, where was we at? The man in the mirror, okay? If you want a better man, woman in the mirror, then it's up to you to make that person for tomorrow, okay? To, you're the one that's going to have to put in the work. You're the one that's going to have to grind it out. You're the one that's going to have to, hey, you know what? If I'm going to be a better person, I'm going to have to make a better person. So uh, having that. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, we're looking at this, and, and I want to take this in a, in a whole concept grasp real quick, okay? That, that we are pure religion undefiled. It's about other people. Okay? I'm not telling you. And one of the things, um, I, our, our pastor was at when we were talking about the, uh, the church in Jerusalem was um, it stayed poor. And the reason it did was early on, everybody brought all their goods and dropped it at the feet of the apostles. And they dropped all this money in. And they, they basically tried socialism. They try, everybody lives on the same standard. And the truth of the matter is, is it don't work. You would give yourself poor to the point that nobody will have anything. Okay. Um, absolutely. Angela, you're right, right there. Um, now, the person don't lose their worth. They might lose their worth in another person's eyes. Um, Jenna, my, my wife has a kidney stone. It's what it is. And she passes them all the time. But this one seems to be one of the bigger ones. She passed one not too very long ago. I promise you it looked like a blue crab. I, I, I looked at it and it made me shudder the points and the stuff. I was like, how did you, that, how did that thing not just like dig into a wall somewhere and hold on? 
and obviously it did for a while because she, she was in screen pain, but Oh, forgive me, Lord. Um, it was it was raunchy looking, man. I'm telling you right now, that's scary. But uh, <clears throat> when we when we do this, our, our, if we should be about other people, <clears throat> okay? We should be we should be about other people. We should be taking care. You got to take care of yourself. Don't please don't misunderstand me and think that I'm I'm over here talking about give everything. You can't do that. Okay, you can't give everything you've got. And number one, number two was they were giving it to the to the apostles. The apostles didn't have a background in money except for Matthew, and 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 his background was collecting. Nobody had uh, the. I, I have a friend of mine who is a money manager, and what little bit of money I got, I got, and he manages it for me. Um, and and you know my my 401k kind of stuff. We took it away from the 401k, moved it out of the 401k. And this advice I'm giving y'all for free: if you have a 401k, move it out of the 401k. Call a money investor and get something on the books. Call me next. I, I will I will send him your name, and he will send somebody close to you over there. Whatever I don't know, but get your money out of your 401ks. They're going to take it back. It's just a matter of time now. Um, Oh, wow. I'm sorry, Angela. So anyhow, um, the, the idea is the full understanding that we should be about taking care of our brothers in as far as we can. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. But you can't, you can give yourself poor. Okay. You can give yourself until you can't help and you can't help yourself. There, Sarah's, Sarah, Sarah's a farmer. Okay. We've got a saying, don't eat your seed corn, okay? And people say, well, what do you mean don't eat your seed corn? Well, every year, you knew that you had to have four bushels to plant your field with, four bushels of corn. That corn is set aside. That's my seed corn. I'm going to use that come spring. I'm going to plant my fields with it, whether it's grain or whatever. And, and when times get tough, okay, you found something else to eat because this corn represents everything I'm going to eat next year. If you eat your seed corn, you're gonna have if, if you ain't gonna have some way to bring some money in, you're gonna have to go and buy some some more seed corn, okay? And and faith, if it's if it was safe wheat or whatever, because you know wheat is you know wheat you spread like grain, you know it's just you spread like grass because it is a grass. But um, if you go out there and you say, okay, um, I'm, I'm gonna buy four. Well, see that means that you're gonna have to sell a cow, a pig, a horse, or something that you had planned on eating or, you know, you planned on selling and buying shoes for the kids. Now, this goes back to the time when um, kids, the reason that the school system was set up that way was you were out by Memorial Day because the kids were needed to plant the gardens. And you were, you were back in school, not before Labor Day, because the kids were needed to bring in the harvest. And if the harvest wasn't in, I promise you the kids didn't go to school. And if we were going to plant early that year, I promise you, the kids didn't go to school. If they're going to eat, we're going to have to feed them. They're going to be in the field, planting the field, hoeing the garden, taking care of the things that are required to do this. So that's don't eat your seed corn. Don't destroy the foundations that hold your relationships together. I'm going to tell you right now, um, I, I take my wife out on dates. I invite her out. I tell her, you know, we're sitting here side by side, and I go, hey, baby, um, how about we go on a date? I, I understand that, Larry, um, but how about we go on a date? How about I'm taking you over here, so-and-so, and, and we go to, to some place, and we're going to have ourselves a little date, okay? Don't eat to see. Make sure that you go back to the basics. If you want your, If you want your relationships to last, whatever relationship they are, I take... When we was closer, I'd, I'd take my daughter on daddy daughter dates. Okay, I took her to the daddy daughter um, dance and stuff, and I danced with my daughter. Okay, you know, and uh, and she stepped all over my feet. We had a great time. Okay, but I danced with my daughter, and I held her so close. I love her so much. Okay, that's my girl. You know, I only got one daughter. I got three boys. I got one daughter. All right, I got two grandsons. I ain't got no no granddaughters. But you know. But the point is, if you're going to have these relationships, you're going to have to work at the relationship. Look at the man in the mirror. 
And if you're a woman, look at the woman in the mirror. Send me that in a, uh, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll take a picture of that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask her about that. Um, she gets kidney stones because she is, um, she has to, her, her calcium, you got to hear the whole story. Her calcium went so low that she takes potassium, citrate, calcium stuff. And it, part of it is that it, it gives her kidney stones, but it's, they're trying to get her bones strong enough to where she can get back. It's part of the spirit of faith thing. It's not done yet. That's, I told y'all. It, it, if you're if you're if you're not careful, you'll look and go. Well, yeah, but she's up and moving. I, that's right. That's right. But God has not released me to where I can do whatever it is that I might do. But anyways, if you want that relationship with your with your children, with your friends, with your brothers, with your sisters, well, I, I got brothers that well, we like to go hunting together. I, I, I know my my brother Lee likes me to go hunting because he's killed two ten point bucks. And I set his stand in the woods on both of them. <laughs> I, I scouted them out. Uh, actually, the one of them, he he went in. I I had uh, I went in. I killed a little spike the night before, and we hunt for the refrigerator. So I'm not worried that it's a that, that how big the, the horns are. But uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry about that, Larry. Um, but you know. I went the night before and I, this little old spike come up the hill and it was dark, almost dark. I popped him because I was like, you know what? I'm taking home some meat, Jack. So I throwed him in the truck. My brother went up there, got in the same, I don't, I'm not going to tell you he got in the same tree. I can't say that, but he got in the same, I told him about it. I said, man, I said, there's a big old buck in there. I said, I didn't see him. He went up there the next morning and went up there and climbed up a tree and killed a 10 point. It was a beautiful 10. And then one time we went down to, no, we don't have elk here. Um, they're in Tennessee, but they're not, not this far down. Um, we went up to, 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 uh, Clyde Bell and, uh, he, he couldn't come out. So I went out there and, and scouted and found him a place and put his stand in the tree and everything, you know, and I went out there and, and he finally came out there. I showed him where it was. I walked him out to it that morning. I walked back and got in my stand and sat up there and a little bit. I hear, Kaboom! I did that rascal and killed another 10 point. Okay. I'm like, well, go good for you, brother. You see, Here's the way this works, okay? Is if, if you and I go hunting and you kill a deer and I don't, we had a good hunt, okay? So if we go fishing and you catch something, if you catch enough for us to eat and I don't, if I get skunked and I get skunked, okay? We still had a good good fishing trip. And I promise you, any day fishing, even a bad day fishing is better than a good day at work. So, you know... <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, that's where I'm at on that. I'm trying to get through. What, what time is it? Am I late? I, I, I must be late. Um, I feel like that I have gone a long ways and haven't got everything done. Fishing, not catching. The reason they call it fishing, hunting and fishing, not catching and killing is because you do a whole lot more of one than you do of the other. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, listen, the fellowship that we have, my brothers and I, around the fire in the evening, I've got six living brothers. And uh, and it'll typically be my brothers and a wife or two sometimes. And, uh, you know, um, we sit around the camp. My brother plays the guitar. We sing. We, we have a good time. We, we tell stories on one another and, you know, relive uh, good, important times in our lives. It's, it's awesome times. All right. And they're hard to come by. So. Good night, Judy. God bless you. I'm glad you were here tonight. Hope you come back. But I want to hit this last last verse right here. It's 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 7 to 13. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 7 to 13. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because you go to the law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, nor shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such, this is what's important. 
And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. All these things are lawful unto me. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Hallelujah. So that, that listen, Such were some of you. Such were we probably all, okay? We got you. I don't look at people and condemn them. Like I said, remember, looking at the man in the mirror? Um, Ava, we're just about to pray right now because that's that's what, what this focus is right here is that when we pray for people, we realized that we were the sinner. We were lost in whatever sin we were lost in because it doesn't matter. What matters is that we stay together in the will of the Lord. All right, I'm going to leave that alone right there. I may come back to that. That's a, that's a, that's a little fish on a limb right there. Uh, I just want to pray real quick, y'all. Lord, in Jesus' name, as we come to you in faith, believe and trust in you, God, lifting you up, magnifying you, we ask you to reach, to touch, to move, to heal, to lead, to guide, specifically for Miss Eva tonight and her family, God. You know all of the problems involved right there. You know, God, right now in Jesus' name, what needs to happen to strengthen, to rejuvenate, to reunite to bond them together in Jesus' name. God, help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Heal us in Jesus' name. Move on us in Jesus' name. Oh, Father of mercy, King of glory, we praise your holy name. We ask you, Lord, to touch each and every need. Hallelujah. Thank you. We praise you for healing Kate in Jesus' name. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for this. We thank you for this, God. You, you didn't have to, but you did. We love you for it. We thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We ask you, Father, to move on each and every one of us, God, as we close out here tonight. We ask you to touch and to move, to keep us going in our fast. We got Thursday and Friday open, but keep us open in our fast to keep us moving forward. That, Lord Jesus, we would be in continuum, that we would continue through and we would gain momentum and we will see men and women coming aboard. And we will see, Lord Jesus, the unity that this fast is bringing us, a body of believers. And as we bring this body of believers to you, Lord, we pray that you, Lord Jesus, will hear our repentant cry and turn to us and heal our land and turn to us and heal our families and turn to us and heal our bodies. <laughs> Oh God, right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you for healing Angela's headache. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you. We continue to pray for the families that are suffering and hurting. We continue to ask you, Lord, to move on us and help us to heal us, Father. Glorify your name in time. Oh, Jesus, have your way. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You're so worthy. Thank you, Lord. I want to go one more time. If anybody's out there that doesn't have a prayer cloth, what's a prayer cloth? This little guy right here is a prayer cloth. It's just a little square cloth. This one's sort of dingy because I keep it out here on my thing. This is, we're going to pray for Sarah's family too in a minute. Um, this, this is a prayer cloth. We put a little drop of oil on it and we mail it to people wherever they are. If you want one, if you have a specific need and you want a prayer cloth, you can message me or message my wife. Okay. And if you don't, if you have somebody that say in the military or something and they wouldn't know what one was, 
we will enclose this note by request. Okay, I actually sent out three of these today. But, uh, and the note says, enclosed you'll find a prayer cloth. God's word tells us to anoint and pray for the sick. James 5 and 14. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And in Acts 19, 11 and 12, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that when the handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick, the diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Because of the times, it's not always possible to get to the elders or the elders to you. So we have anointed this piece of cloth with anointing oil and have prayed for you and your need, whatever it may be. We also write your name in a notebook and we pray over the notebook every morning and night. It's our hope that you place the anointed cloth somewhere in your Bible, wallet, fridge, that when you see it, it is a reminder that God is with you and that you are loved and are being prayed for daily in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, thank you, Jesus. Now, if you want one, message me. If you can't message me, you can email me. This is my email right here. Okay, that's my email, rcsu at yahoo.com. Take a screenshot of that, if you will. And, uh, you know, if you'd rather just email me, I will email. I, I, I have to have a mailing address to send you the I have to have a mailing address to send you the prayer clause. Um, right now, I'm going to pray for families, everybody. I'm going to pray for families in general, Sarah's in particular. But let's pray for a minute. Let's just let's join together right now. I'm going to pray for I'm going to pray for Kate's family. I'm going to pray for Sarah's family. I'm going to pray for Eva's family. I'm going to pray for Jenna's family. I'm going to pray for Pete's family. I'm going to pray for Larry's family. All of our families. If Lathus is still here, or if he ain't, we're going to pray for Lathus and family. Lord, in Jesus' name, right now, God, we're going to pray for each and every family member, God, that you would move on us, that you would heal our families, God, that you would reunite us, that you would rekindle the love and the fire and the desire, that you would help us, God, to find one another in this world, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to put our sins to the side, to forgive and be forgiven, to help and to lead and to heal for Sister Sarah in particular, and also for Miss Jenna, Lord, she's obviously got an issue that we're going to just pray with and trust you, Lord, that you're going to move on Buck and and do some healing on him, Lord, in Jesus' name. That you're going to that, that that Tim's family, Lord, we don't know what the need is, but they need to be healed, God. We know that they need to be healed. Therefore, we're praying for Tim and his family right now in Jesus' name. For Kate and her family, for Sarah and her family. For Jen and her family, for Pete and his family, for, for Larry and his family, for me and my family, Lord, in Jesus' name. I want my kids to come back to God too, Lord. I want to see the great and wonderful things in my family as well. So, in, as, as I do in these families here, represented here, God, that your glory would be established. That, that we, as we praise you, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving. We enter into your courts with praise. We bow before the throne crying, Abba. Father, Lord, heal, lead, guide, unite, protect. Make us one, Lord, again, in Jesus' name. And Lord, for, for Angela's family, Lord, make sure you go with, with Miss Brooke and keep her safe, hallelujah. And we ask you, Lord, if you would, to continually bless God and keep us. We know, Lord, that there's more needs out there. We pray over the prayer cloth book in the ministry. We ask you, God, to, to touch each and every need represented and each and every family in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Kate. That's beautiful. Sarah, it's beautiful. Hallelujah. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate my moderators. Uh, y'all are doing a jam-up job. Uh, I, I couldn't do this without y'all because you know I'd get sidetracked. You know I have. You know I have. Um, chase that rabbit, you know, because uh, you, you you think that some of these people are being sincere, and you know they're not. But uh, then you take a chance, and then you get proved they're not. You get knocked off. You're welcome, Tim. Um, I hope you request a prayer call if you hadn't already got one. Uh, all you have to do, I just shot you a follow back. All you have to do is message me 
your mailing address and and it'll be if you do it tonight it'll be in tomorrow's mail um you know if you want one for you and one for your wife one for you one for your wife and one for your kid um all around okay you're all welcome y'all know that i love y'all and uh it's it's a funny thing in it you know i love you never met you in person i talked to you a few times but it's awesome and i love it i love it Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate y'all. And in the meantime, I hope that, uh, I hope that y'all have a great evening. Uh, let me see. Started at six o'clock tonight. Uh, Larry and Tom have got the, got the helm on the fast. Tomorrow's Belinda. Uh, Lapis has um, Wednesday. Renee has Saturday. We need Thursday and Friday covered. If anybody wants to cover Thursday and Friday with the fast, uh, let me know. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll pencil you in. If somebody else don't take it, you know, uh, that just falls to, to, to where we are. So in the meantime, God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful evening. And we will see you all tomorrow. Lord willing, 10 o'clock. God bless y'all and good night. Oh, wait a minute. What's your name, Reed Cinder? Wait a minute, Reed Cinder said you'd take Thursday. Laura. Okay, Laura, you have Thursday. Now, if you don't know, that means that Thursday at 6 o'clock evening, you'll put your spoon down and you can pick it back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I can get this thing to turn off. There we go.